Hey, what's up everybody? Eternal Fire here, and today we're going to be talking about the Prot Warrior in patch 725. In this video, we'll talk about the new legendaries for the Prot Warrior, stat priorities, abilities, different talent builds you can choose from, and finally the rotation. With that said, let's take a look. Before we begin, let's just do a quick recap on the Prot Warrior and see what changed, as well as take a look at the two new legendaries. First, Ignore Pain got a 20% buff, which is a very welcome and needed uh, buff. Revenge got a 12% nerf, which is also understandable. Shield block, um, you can no longer have up more than three times its base duration. And that was really something they did across the board to tanks, but it was really geared at the um, Brewmaster Monk and how they were cheesing Iron Skin Brew. And then the last thing that they changed for the Warrior was Indomitable. It used to be 25% increase to max health and ignore pain. It used to be 25, now it's just 20. So they got a slight nerf there. So overall, the biggest thing is we got a 20% buff to ignore pain. So hopefully that uh, that helps a lot and scales well. Now let's take a look at the new legendaries. You have Ararat's Blood Mirror, Shield Block, and Spell Reflection gain one additional charge, which is nice. And then Soul of the Battle Lord, I can't wait to get this ring. It gives Protection Warriors Vengeance, so you get to have Vengeance and Booming Voice together. Okay, first off, we're going to talk about stat priority for the Prop Warrior. So we're going to talk about the stat priority, but in a little bit of a different way. I saw something really interesting on the Warrior Discord where it said Warriors should be focusing, Prot Warriors specifically, should be focusing on item level. Get your item level up as high as you can. Increase your armor, increase your stamina and your strength as high as you can for your best chance at survivability. So that was something that I hadn't read anywhere else previously. And... I really liked the idea behind that note was get your item level as high as you can use your highest item level pieces because the chances are that is going to be your best upgrade. So if you have a higher level item piece, but the stats are, you know, not your ideal stats, just go with that piece anyway, because it's probably going to be an upgrade with that said. Okay. You do have priorities as far as your second stat secondary stats go. So at this point in, and uh, right before Tumas Argaris releases tomorrow, or not tomorrow, on Tuesday, um, you know, I have three different boots that are, you know, 905 or 900. So at that point, when you have multiple of the same gear slot, then you can choose your best stats, okay? And that's when I would say, go with, try to get to 30-ish percent haste, then mastery, then versatility, then crit. But focus on your item level, and then when when you have your high item level, then you can focus on getting those pieces with the better stats for your character. So now we're going to talk about the stat priorities for your secondary stats. First, you have haste. You want it to be around 30%, and the main reason being is shield block. When your haste is at 30, around 30%, you can have shield block up close enough to 100% of the time. This is from the Warrior Discord. They have a link to a forum post on MMO Champion. I'll leave it in the description. You can read it if you want. But I really like what they said regarding close enough to 100% of the time. That's why you want your haste at 30%. Also, if you are using Devastator, okay, um, Devastator is now making Devastate an auto attack. And the more haste you have the more you devastate, you know, use your auto attack. So that's just the more chance, the faster chances you have at resetting the cooldown of shield slam. It also reduces the cooldown of shield block, shield slam, revenge, and thunderclap. So it's just massively important in so many ways, smoothing out your damage reduction, uh, being able to generate more rage, especially with the talent devastator. So that is why haste is your most important stat. Second, you have mastery. Because when you have that shield block up for close to 100% of the time, mastery is just going to allow you to have more critical blocks. So instead of mitigating a physical attack for 30%, it's going to be mitigating for 60%. Um, and it also increases your attack power. Versatility obviously increases the damage you do, but it also decreases the damage you take. So that's another good thing to have. And then lastly, crit. And the reason crit comes in last is because other than giving you critical strikes with your damage, all it does is increases your parry chance. Now I've had a lot of people tell me, well, increased parry chance means when you parry, you get a free revenge, which means more rage for ignore pain. And while yes, what is this guy doing? And while yes, that is true, you, um, 
you can't rely on that small amount of RNG because you'll see I have 18% critical strike and I have 20% parry. So uh, the parry from crit only gives me 9.7% increased parry. And that's just too low of a percentage chance to try and reliably stack uh, critical strike for that RNG chance to mitigate damage. You want, you want reliability and haste and mastery and versatility are all going to give you a reliable damage reduction. And that's what you're looking for. So again, focus on item level. And then when you can focus on your secondary stats in that order, haste, mastery, versatility, crit. One last note to add with stats is if you get a rare rats blood mirror, uh, I believe that you should be able to roll. If you're looking for survivability, you should be able to roll with less haste because of the fact that you're going to have a third charge of shield block. And that's really interesting uh, because now you don't have to have just two charges. You have the three. So you're going to easily be able to have shield block up 100% of the time, even without that much haste. So you could probably go down to, you know, 20 to 25% haste and still have shield block up that much because you have that third charge. Um, so that's really interesting. If you get that, uh, Definitely leave me a comment if you get it before me. So I, I want to know how it works because I'm thinking if you can lower your haste to like 20% because you now have a th extra charge of shield block, which means you don't have to worry about having that much haste because you're going to have 100% uptime on shield block. Then you can focus on mastery and versatility. And I think that's a really interesting build. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there, something to think about anyway. Looking at the talents now, you have Shockwave, which should be your pretty much... Uh, in general default go to it's a frontal cone stun it's great to use it's up very often if you hit it with three targets or more it'll reduce the cooldown by 20 seconds it's very nice to have storm bolt in this expansion i've only ever used it in the mage tower warbringer is best for single target boss fights where there's only the boss to attack and nothing to stun it'll do the most damage when you intercept uh, whenever you intercept the boss moving down you have impending victory it's a self-heal in combat and basically what it is good for is solo content inspiring presence should be your default go-to again for dungeons and raids as it heals uh part of your raid members within 60 yards when they deal damage three percent of the damage they deal they'll be healed back because of you taking inspiring presence safeguard i don't use avatar and renewed fury are very uh, very, both very good talents to take. It renewed fury. Whenever you use ignore pain, it enrages you and you get a 10% damage buff for six seconds. Avatar is on a 1.5 minute cooldown and it gives you 20% damage buff for 20 seconds. I typically use this for, uh, mythic plus dungeons because I want a time when I put out my biggest burst. I want to have control of that where this is just an overall damage increase, uh, you know, a lot of times. So both of these are very good. It's more up to you what your preference is. Bounding Stride is the only viable talent, in my opinion, in this tier. It uh, reduces the cooldown of Heroic Leap and gives you a little speed boost after you leap. Then you have in the next tier Devastator and Indomitable. Indomitable, as we said earlier, got nerfed by 5%. Um, and then you have Devastator. So it replaces Devastate and so Devastate becomes your auto attacks, making your auto attacks deal a lot more damage, generate 5 rage every time you hit, and has a 30% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on a champ, Shield Slam. In my opinion, this is the best to take. Um, hands down, you do way more damage, you generate more rage, and right now for the Prop Warrior, I would say rage generation is a problem, which is probably why they made the Prop Warrior 4-piece what it is, making Berserker Rage uh, give you give you that, you know, extra rage generation. So, you know, that's the tier 20. So I think that's not going to be an issue at all. Um, but yeah, Devastator, in my opinion, is the best talent in this tier. It does take some getting used to, and I do recommend getting a weak aura for your swing timer. I'll link that into the, the description as well. Then in the next tier, you have Vengeance and Booming Voice. I like these talents both equally this vengeance is better for survivability you weave between ignore pain and revenge reducing the rage cost of both of them by 35 percent so basically if you have a full bar of rage and you're using vengeance and you weave ignore pain with revenge you're going to go through that rage a lot slower than you would if you had another talent taken or you were doing it incorrectly if you use vengeance and you don't you know alternate every other ignore pain with revenge you're, you're just wasting a talent that you could be taking advantage of and you want to be really careful for that. Um, 
And then Booming Voice, I love this talent. It gives you 60 Rage whenever you use Demoralizing Shout, as well as the duration of Demoralizing Shout now gives you a 25% damage increase. So it's a huge damage buff. I like uh, Macroing Avatar, Booming Voice, and Battle Cry together, and you get some huge hits. Um, that's why I'm also looking forward to the Legendary Ring, being able to have Vengeance and Booming Voice. But for now, if you're looking for survivability, go with Vengeance. If you're looking for damage increase, go with Booming Voice. Anger Management in the last tier is probably uh, the biggest necessity, really. Every 10 Rage you spend reduces the remaining cooldown on all of your survivability cooldowns in Battle Cry. Um, so it's really important to have. It's really nice having Shield Wall up more often than every four minutes. Last Stand, uh, Battle Cry demoralizing shout and it's just it's great to have those up more frequently than their actual cooldowns because four minutes for shield wall is brutal last stand being on a three minute cooldown is pretty brutal especially if what you're doing is hard heavy repercussions i love this talent but i just can't justify taking it over uh anger management right now we'll see if that changes into masar garris i will be playing with both uh so heavy repercussions, shield slam extends the duration of shield block by one second, and shield block increases the damage of shield slam by an additional 30%. So Shield Block increases Shield Slam's damage by 30%. When you use heavy repercussions, it's then 60%. The nice thing about heavy repercussions going back to stat priorities is when you have that 30% haste and heavy repercussions, you can easily keep shield block up, shield block up 100 percent of the time. But it's just so detrimental when you're doing a high level keystone or, you know, prog progression to have your cooldowns up more frequently. I find that just in general to be much more helpful. So that is the, uh, the talents I would go for is if you're going for a damage build, again, either up here, um, this is not for damage. This is utility. This is for utility. Uh, this tier is for damage and you can either choose renewed fury or avatar. I choose avatar most of the time. This is the utility tier, but for the next three down, you have Devastator, Booming Voice, Anger Management are excellent routes to go for maxing out your damage, trying to put out as much damage as you can. If you're looking for, uh, you know, survivability, this is how I do high level Mythic Plus dungeons. I, I just roll with Vengeance. If you're looking to get the max amount of survivability that you can possibly muster, you're going to go with Indomitable, Vengeance, and Heavy Repercussions. That way your ignore pains are high, your health pool is much larger. Uh, Vengeance Weaving will just help you with that problem with Rage. You're going to have Losing Devastator. And then Heavy Repercussions is just a must um, when it comes to this build. So that is a build for like the absolute best survivability build you can have. Moving on to the rotation, let's talk about some of the abilities before we do that. So your active mitigation is going to be Shield Block. And ignore pain. Okay. Ignore pain. When you use it, you can use 20 to 60 rage. The more rage, the more strength of the ignore pain. But ignore pain, you fight through the pain, ignoring 90% of the next two up to 1 million damage you take from any source based on rage spent. So you always want to try to use ignore pain when you can get a max ignore pain via 60 rage. Unless you're running vengeance, then it's 35% less. And then the other one is shield block. So razor shield blocking every melee attack against you for six seconds. These blocks can be critical blocks increasing sh and it increases the shield slam damage. You have two charges, charges of this. So when you're taking physical damage, you want to always make sure shield block is up as much as possible, cl as close to 100% as you can. So always make sure shield block is active. And when you're taking physical damage and you're still taking, uh, and you're still taking a lot of damage even though shield block is up, you're going to use ignore pain to augment the incoming damage, okay? If you are going against magic damage, you're going to want to prioritize using like Star Augur, for instance. He doesn't do anything physical. The only reason I'm going to use shield slam is to buff the damage of sh uh, shield block is to buff the damage of shield slam. But your main uh, source of mitigation, damage mitigation is going to be Ignore Pain and Spell Reflect. Never forget that you have Spell Reflect. And they've changed the way it works with your Artifact weapon right here. So Spell Reflection reduces magical damage you take by an additional 20%. And then Spell Reflection now reflects an unlimited number of spells during its duration. So it doesn't just reflect one one cast and then it's gone. It, it keeps mitigating damage for the uh, five seconds that it's up. Okay, 
It's on a 25 second cooldown. So this is really your strongest magic mitigation, but it's not up very, you know, available to you very often with a 25 second cooldown. You're going to have to rely heavily on ignore pain. Thankfully, they buffed it by 20%. In Tomb of Sargeras, it's, it's sounding like much more of the damage overall is going to be physical. So that's great for a prop warrior as we can use shield block and really take advantage of that. Um, I'm thinking having, you know, higher mastery, uh, higher haste and mastery will be even more important so you can get more critical blocks while your while your shield block is up. So that is your active mitigation. Your survivability cooldowns, let's talk your DPS cooldown is battle cry. It's up every minute and gives you 100% crit chance uh, for five seconds. So you pretty much pop that in, you know, on a pole and then after that, whenever it's up. Whenever it's up, I prefer to hold on to it for a few seconds so I can get, you know, shield block to buff shield slam and then I'll shield slam, pop battle cry and shield slam. So that way you're just getting the most out of your most damaging ability, which is shield slam. So that's your only DPS cooldown unless you're using avatar, but we talked about that already. Um, your survivability cooldowns are shield wall. Demoralizing Shout and Last Stand. Last Stand increases your max health by 70% for 15 seconds. Uh, Demoralizing Shout reduces all the damage you take by 20% 20, 20 for 12 seconds, and it gives you 60 rage if you take uh, the Booming Voice as well as a damage increase. And then Shield Wall is this is like your big your big damage reduction is Shield Wall uh, reduces all damage you take by 40% for 8 seconds. So that's a that's a really big deal. Those are your three, uh, like big survivability cooldowns. And then you have Neltherian's Fury, which you blow in front of you and you do that damage. Now I'm in combat. And while it's active, while you're channeling this ability, and it's funny because when the expansion first came out, I was more prone to use it, try, try and use it like on a big AOE pack for damage. I'd pop Battle Cry and then Neltherian's Fury, but it's way more pertinent to just be doing Revenge and Thunderclap for AOE. Uh, Neltherian's Fury is an amazing ability when you want to just consistently critically block everything that comes at you while you're channeling. A really good example is Spellblade in the Nighthold. Whenever she'd do her Annihilate on me and I had, you could use it every other time she annihilated on you, uh, you just pop Neltherian's Fury and you just laugh at the fact that you're taking almost no damage at all. Um, so for situations where, you know, um, Another good example was, say, you were fighting a, like a boss that had Fists of Fury like a monk has. When he does Fists of Fury, just pop Neltherian's Fury, you know, Neltherian's Fury and it like negates any damage that they're doing to you. While they channel, you can channel that. Um, so used properly, it's a really great cooldown, and it's only a 45-second cooldown. So... Uh, those are your survivability cooldowns. Your main abilities that you're going to use is obviously Shield Block. Shield Slam is your hardest hitting ability and it generates the most rage. So that's your main rage generator. Thunderclap is your second hardest hitting ability now that Revenge is nerfed and it generates five rage. Revenge is what you want to use a, if you get a parry, if you get, you know, if you parry and it procs a free one, you want to use it immediately as long as Shield Slam is not up. But you use revenge to dump rage when you don't need to be ignoring pain. That's something you want to be really careful for. If you need to be stacking ignore pain, or if you need to be stacking rage for ignore pain to mitigate upcoming damage, you don't, you want to be really careful to not hit revenge unless it's free. So unless you get that free parry that we talked about, you want to be careful not to just spam revenge or you're going to go dry on rage really fast and you're going to have a hard time surviving. Yeah, you're doing more damage, but what's more important? Doing damage or not dying and don't get me wrong i'm a big advocate of you know doing high damage as a prop warrior um but it's not worth being rage starved and dying so let's talk about the rotation okay so the first thing you're going to do is i have a macro set up for demoralizing shout battle cry avatar and shield block so right here Slash cast avatar, slash cast battle cry, slash cast demoralizing shout, and slash cast shield block. So basically what that means is I pop that when I charge in. You intercept in, which gives you enough rage to use your shield block. Okay, it generates 15 rage, and shield block costs 15 rage. So while you're charging in or intercepting in, you... um you pop this cool macro, right? So you're going to have all your cooldowns going and shield block going. 
Um, and then you're going to, you're going to shield slam immediately. And the whole purpose of your rotation is to get shield slam procs. Okay. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So you are making sure that shield block is staying up. We want to keep shield block up as much as we can. We're going to use an ignore pain to get rid of that. But every time, and you also have the swing timer you want to watch for. Because you're, remember, your white hits can proc shield slam, and you don't want to over, be overlapping with Devastator. So this is what you're doing, and you're going to see I've been in combat since I know Therian Fury earlier, so I'm doing 64k damage. We know that's not true. But that is the rotation right there. You want to make sure that you're prioritizing shield slam, thunderclap. If you're rage starved, you only use revenge when it procs, but if you have enough rage, you can go ahead and just use it any time. But that, that is all there is to it. There's not many buttons to hit, but it is a pretty fast moving rotation, especially when you have higher amounts of haste. Um, so shield slam, thunderclap, use revenge if you don't need the rage or if it procs with a parry. Keep shield block up. Use ignore pain to help shield block reduce damage and then use your, you know, survivability cooldowns as needed. And just remember you have two intercepts. You have heroic leap, which is always nice for a warrior to have. And that is pretty much all there is to the prop warrior. It's pretty simple these days. Uh, just make sure that you're not overlapping your white hits, which is your devastator, with your revenge and thunderclap, which could potentially be missing out on chances for shield slam procs. And that is all there is to the rotation, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.